But the debate is settled. We've got to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel, cut greenhouse gas emissions, move to energy efficiency, move to sustainable energy. It is overwhelming, the science. Overwhelming. It's not even a question. The science is overwhelming, says Beckel. But overwhelming about what exactly? Energy travels from the sun in the form of shortwave infrared radiation. Some of it doesn't get through the Earth's atmosphere, but lots of it does, and it's then absorbed by the land and the oceans and warms them up. The Earth re-radiates the energy back in the form of longwave infrared radiation. But gases in the Earth's atmosphere, called greenhouse gases, trap some of that radiation. They act like an invisible insulating blanket around the Earth. This effect is perfectly natural, and if the greenhouse gases weren't there at all, global temperatures would be 20 to 30 degrees centigrade colder than they are now, probably too cold for life on Earth to survive. Carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gases that are found in the atmosphere quite naturally. But for some time, scientists have argued that all the extra carbon dioxide produced by burning fossil fuels is making the insulating blanket around the Earth too effective. It means that less energy escapes back into space. Instead, the trapped energy heats up the Earth's climate, producing climate change. We will see in this presentation that the science is not out. It's not fact and the debate is not over. They would love to say that the debate is over, but as we'll see, it is far from over. The data being collected has been skewed, has been falsified. There's been a link with the global warming, climate change, and it has to stop. This is not real and it needs to be addressed. Climate change is a hoax. You will see interesting correlations. You will see interesting connections with climate change and the flat earth. Why are they linking flat earth with global warming? Why are they linking flat earth with climate change? We will see the flat earth climate change connection. There's so much data coming forward that we can see that the climate change is nothing but a lie and it needs to be addressed. This is something that's important. Wake up. Understand you've been lied to. This has to change. It's science. It's facts. But it's not. It's lies. Thank you, Senator Coons. And I'd like to, to go back briefly to Mr. Mayor. In your written testimony, uh, you said that the science behind climate change and its effect on minority communities, quote, should not be up for debate. Uh, I'm curious, is, is the Sierra Club, is, is this a frequent practice to declare areas of science not up for debate, not up for consideration of what the evidence and data show? If you're right. If you are relying on the evidence and data, you know, the science, the preponderance of the evidence are there. But, 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 but that's a different thing than saying we should not debate a question, that the Sierra Club has, has declared this scientific issue resolved and there should be no debate. Based upon the preponderance of the evidence, the science is settled. But the thing is, is that anything is up for de debate, Senator. We can debate anything. Well, you know, I would note that the, even the phrase preponderance of the ev evidence, having been a practicing lawyer for many years, means 51 percent. That means 40, not, at least 51 percent is what the preponderance means. Uh, you know, I would ask, for example, if you want to end debate, you don't want to address the facts, how do you address the fact that in the last 18 years the satellite data show no demonstrable warming whatsoever? 
sir, I would rely upon the Union of Concerned Scientists, and I would rely upon the evidence, and uh, again, from our own NOAA officials, uh, the data are there. Uh, is it correct that the satellite data over the last 18 years demonstrate no significant warming? No. How is it incorrect? Based upon our experts, it's been refuted long ago, and there is no long. It's not up for a scientific debate. I'm curious if so. so it's it's. I, I want to understand this. I do find it highly interesting that the president of the Sierra Club, when when asked what the satellite data demonstrate about warming, um, apparently is is relying on on staff. So so. You, it's just a mistake. The, the nice thing about the satellite data is these are objective numbers. Correct. And the numbers over the last 18 years, are you familiar with the phrase, the pause? The answer is yes, and uh, essentially uh, we rest on our position. And, and to what you said, you are familiar with the pause, so to what does the phrase, the pause, refer? I'm sorry, you said you were familiar with that term, so I asked to, to what does it refer? Essentially, it's the slowing of global warming during the 40s, sir. During the 40s? Is it not the term that, that global warming alarmists have used to explain the inconvenient truth, to use a phrase popularized by former Vice President Al Gore, that the satellite data over the last 18 years demonstrate no significant warming whatsoever. Global warming alarmists call that the pause because the computer models say there should be dramatic warming, and yet the actual satellites taking the measurement don't show any significant warming. But Senator, 97% of the scientists concur and agree that there is global warming and anthropogenic impact with but, regards but to global The problem with that statistic that gets cited a lot is it's based on one bogus study. And, and indeed, your response, I, I would point yep. to your response, is quite striking. I asked about the science and the evidence, the actual data. We have satellites. They're measuring Correct. temperature. Th that should be relevant. And your answer was, pay no attention to your lying eyes and the numbers that the satellites show. Instead, listen to the scientists who are receiving massive grants who tell us, do not debate the science. Sir, this is the, one of the national pastimes in America. And while we're debating uh, what 97% of scientists have already settled, uh, the 3% that we, as they say, have invested in with regards to the carbon industry, you know, the, our planet is cooking and heating up and warming. So this is one of the reasons why. So, so hold on a second. It, it is the Sierra Club's position that right now the Earth is cooking up and heating and warming. Is, is that the Sierra Club's? I mean, I just want to quote you and understand. I'm, I am saying I concur with 97% of, of our, of, as I say, of the world's scientists with regards to global warming and the anthropogenic effects of mankind with regards to but, climate. But, but, but sir, would, would, you, would you answer the question, is it the Sierra Club's position, as you just testified, that the Earth is cooking up and heating and warming right now? Is, the, is that the Sierra Club's position? Global temperatures are on the rise, sir. And I assume the Sierra Club would, would issue a, a public retraction if confronted with the facts that the data are precisely as I described, that over the last 18 years, there has been no significant warming. And indeed, that is why global warming alarmists invented the term, the pause, to explain what they call the pause in global warming because the data demonstrate what you just said, that the earth is, is cooking and warming is, is not backed up by the data. We are concurring with 97% of the scientists that absolutely say the opposite, sir. So if the data are contrary to your testimony, would the Sierra Club issue a retraction? Sir, we concur with the 97% scientific consensus with regards to global warming. 
Mr. I, I'd, I'd like to, 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 to repeat, certainly in a moment, but I'd like to repeat the question and get an answer. If the data are contrary to your testimony, would the Sierra Club issue a retraction? We concur with 97% of the scientists that believe that the anthropogenic impacts of mankind with regards to global warming are true. So, so does that mean you're not willing to answer the question? We can concur with the preponderance of the evidence and the science at 97%. You're asking me if we take the 3% over the 97%. No, no I'm actually not asking about a survey among scientists. I'm asking about the objective data, the numbers. The scientists rely upon their objective data and their analysis, and 97% have concurred and conclude that global warming is indeed a fact. You know, Mr. Meyer, I, I, I find it striking that for a public policy organization that purports to focus exclusively on environmental issues, that you're not willing to tell this committee that you would issue a retraction if your <clears throat> testimony is objectively false under scientific data. That, that undermines the credibility of any organization if you will persist in a political position regardless of what the science shows, regardless of the facts, regardless of the evidence, and regardless of the data. That, that, that is not consistent, I would suggest, with sound public policy. Sir, you can pick whatever, choose and cherry pick whatever data you wish, but I concur with the 97% of scientists who concur that not global warming is a fact. Senator Coons. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just simply wanted to observe that we have a, a broadly representative and uh, qualified group of folks who were brought here to talk about overregulation and its impact on minority communities. And uh, I don't speak for the Sierra Club, obviously, but um, it is my hope and expectation that if you want to pursue that line of inquiry with them further, they'd be happy to. But my assumption is that we will continue to focus on the, the subject of the hearing at hand. And I, and I certainly concur with Senator Coons, and I would note that Mr. Mayor's written testimony and oral testimony focused in significant part on the Obama administration's new global warming regulations that could cost up to 10 million jobs and pose massive costs on American consumers. And so he argued that the data support causing millions of Americans to lose their jobs, including millions of African Americans and Hispanics. And I was pressing on what the data was that he was testifying about. And I, and I would note that, that that is not only relevant to his testimony, it was almost the entire subject of his testimony. Uh, and yet, apparently, the testimony is not based on the data or the evidence, or he is not prepared to discuss the data or evidence beyond asserting that, that, that we should, should take the word uh, to take their word for it. With that, I want to thank all the witnesses for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, we will be keeping the hearing record open for an additional five business days, which means the record will be closed at the end of the business day on Tuesday, October 13th, 2050. Thank you very much to each of the witnesses. The hearing is adjourned. Thank you. Roy Spencer is a climatologist at the University of Alabama. He's skeptical about man causing global warming. Uh, to debate him, we have, well, actually, we have an empty chair. We ask a dozen scientists who are concerned about man causing global warming to debate Roy. Most refuse. People used to joke years and years ago about those who argued that the Earth was flat. And for a long period of time, people argued that the Earth was flat, even when the evidence of astronomers and others and explorers uh, evidence that it was in fact quite the opposite and so we have in effect with respect to climate change in America today what is fundamentally a flat earth caucus a bunch of people some of them in the United States Congress itself who still argue against all the science all the evidence they argue that somehow we don't know enough about climate change, or they argue that the evidence is sufficient, or they argue that it just is a hoax. I mean, we have members of the United States Senate who argue that it is a hoax. I want to be clear. I am willing to work with anybody, Republicans, Democrats, independents, libertarians, greens, anybody to combat this threat on behalf of our kids. I am open to all sorts of new ideas. 
maybe better ideas to make sure that we deal with climate change in a way that promotes jobs and growth. Nobody has a monopoly on what is a very hard problem. But I don't have much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Okay, go ahead. Give me a question. Do you plan to visit with the Pope when he comes into Philadelphia? Well, the Pope believes in global warming. You do know that, right? The Pope and many world leaders understand something. The Flat Earth. If you look in the UN, you'll see the Flat Earth clearly shown with the 33 degrees of Freemasonry. We've been lied to and understanding the Flat Earth, climate change, connection, you will understand that indeed this world is not what we have been led to believe. At first, you might think it's crazy, but when you look into the facts, you will find out that indeed things are true. The world's elite, the top scientists, the media have been lying to us for ages. Climate change is just one of the big deceptions of this world. Climate change, if you look to the Bible, you will clearly see space, the universe, the Big Bang, everything that they have taught has been a lie. Can I hop in here? Uh, because, Bob, you say flat earth all the time. And this is why the debate over climate change is disintegrating. No one cares anymore because Al True. Gore has trafficked in hysteria and panic. The American public is suffering from panic fatigue. There could be an actual debate about this. There will never be a debate because you call people like me a flat earther. They are terrified for the secret to get out. They have been using climate change. They have been using Big Bang, evolution. We are special. We have been created in an enclosed system. All of their lives all lead back to the Big Bang. Follow all the conspiracies, follow all the lies of the elite, the media, the scientism, religion of today. Not wanting to debate saying that things are fact. Indeed, we understand they are not. Why would they hide it? Could it be true? The earth is not what you've been told? Didn't we all spin that globe in kindergarten, grade one? From an early age we were taught, we were indoctrinated into the world system. The lies continue. We need to address these. Understand that this world you call home is not what you've been led to believe. God created us in an enclosed system. There's no danger of climate change. There's no danger of global warming. All these things are made up to enslave the population, to create carbon tax. Wake up, it's time to understand the flat earth truth. Fifteen hundred years ago, everybody knew the earth was the center of the universe. Five hundred years ago, everybody knew the earth was flat. And fifteen minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. So I'm for innovation. New innovative technology with natural gas has driven down the price, so it would be the equivalent of a decline to $1.13 an oil. So I'm for innovation. I'm just asking the president, who apparently belongs to the Flat Earth Sierra Club Society. <laughs> I know huge numbers of people who think that, look, 
30 years ago, people thought that the, a lot of the scientists thought that the planet was cooling, not warming. So yeah. you know, all of a sudden now that the science is completely that's a, reversed. But if you that's go, a no, canard, it's, Bill, Steve, you, Bill, it oh. is a canard to say that there is a total nope. scientific consensus on global warming. There You're is right. Not. There is not. There are, no, You're that is right. not true. There are some, some there scientists, are scientists who believe in global warming who work, and others who right, don't. Who that is for an excellent remark. It is absurd. It's always been absurd. Yeah, there are there are scientists on the other side. The, the humility to I don't understand. I, I, look, I, I'm the one who's having humility. I'm saying we should have a debate look, here. You guys are saying Steve, that the debate is. How about we just listen to Steve, scientists? I mean, uh, that's that's what I'm saying. Is. Listen well, to I, scientists. I, I absolutely have the that. humility have to believe that. people who but know things you don't. Because it's people like you guys who are saying no, we can't have a debate on this. The debate is over. At some point, the debate has to be. You're the one should have some humility. Wait a minute. There are a lot of people who disagree. Should we still debate whether the Earth is flat? According to a recent study conducted by the National Science Foundation, one in four Americans believes that the sun and everything else in space revolves around the Earth, and not, as modern science says, the other way around. Believing in what's called geocentrism is really pretty stupid right now, given that Galileo, Copernicus, and Kepler debunked it over 500 years ago. It's about as sensible as believing in Bigfoot or the reptile Illuminati. And anyone who wants to be taken seriously as a modern thinking person pretty much rejects geocentrism outright. The same can be said about climate change denial. Over 97% of scientists agree that global warming is real and that human beings are causing it by burning fossil fuels. There is no debate. Climate change is a fact, just like the Earth revolving around the sun is a fact. And anyone who says otherwise should be treated like the crazy person they are. The satanic agenda has been in place for hundreds of years. From Copernicus, the Freemasonry elite have lied to us, have deceived us. This entire system, the universe, the galaxies, the planets, the orbits, everything. The fake pictures that NASA gives us their lives. We've been led to believe our world is something that it's not. Understand the flat earth. Understand the connection with climate change. Where they're continuing and why they're linking it with people that believe in such a way. Is it crazy to believe this way? Have you looked into the truth? Have you researched it enough to know? Before you judge something, at least research it. Understand, the Bible is very clear. If you claim to be Christian, a follower of Christ, and a Bible literalist, you have to understand these verses. Joshua 10, 12, 13, it's clear. The sun stood still. We've been told that the sun doesn't move, that we revolve around the sun. This is not the truth. And with researching, you will understand that the earth is stationary, that it is geocentrism, the geocentric model. Look into it. Understand that the heliocentric model is a lie. All of their lives from climate change, evolution, to the Big Bang. The entire universe that they've constructed is a lie. It will enslave the masses. Wake up, understand that you are living in a matrix and God is true. We're trying to move toward the future. They, they want to be stuck in the past. And we've heard this kind of thinking before. Let me tell you something. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, <laughs> they, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round.
is settled. That the true believers in the new superstition that is global warming, and which replaces religion for those who've never really had it, now at last they've got something they can believe in and get passionate about mm. in the absence of religion. Um, they are very reluctant to debate because one is, as it were, challenging what is not based on reason. It is purely a faith, but it doesn't happen to be a decent religious faith. It's just dopey, but they therefore, they're terrified of meeting somebody who knows the science, knows the economics, and can say, sorry, but the emperor really has no clothes. It doesn't matter how many scientists or bureaucrats or politicians you line up, and they swear blind because it's profitable or congenial or expedient or it speaks to a political faction with which they align themselves that this is true. In the end, truth alone is worthy of our entire devotion and the global warming scare fundamentally is not true. Carbon dioxide is a natural gas. It has dominated the atmosphere for an extraordinarily long period of time and we now are at a dangerously low level if we halved the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, we would have no terrestrial plants. Carbon dioxide is plant food. It is not a pollutant. To use words like pollution with carbon dioxide is misleading and deceptive. I'm not qualified to debate you climatologists. Why won't you debate Roy Spencer? He's not a flake. He, he helped produce the data that, that the government uses for the I'm, atmospheric temperatures. I'm, 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 not a, I'm not a politician. You know, I'm here because you asked me to come on and talk about the science, and I am totally happy to do that. And any time you want to ask me again, just give me a call and I will come here and I will tell you about the science and I will point you in the right direction. You are implacably opposed to the concept of man-made climate change. Why? We followed the evidence. Uh, there are quite literally hundreds of factors that influence global temperature. Everything from tilt to the Earth's axis to ocean cycles to water vapor, methane, solar system, the sun, cloud feedback, volcanic dust. The idea that CO2 is the tail that wags the dogs is not supportable. And if you go down and look at the scientific literature, we're finding reams of, da of data and new peer-reviewed studies showing the medieval and Roman warming periods as warm or warmer than today without our CO2 emissions. So what's happened here is the whole movement, because now we've gone 16 years without global warming, according to the UN data, and they've now morphed into extreme weather. And we have the absurd spectacle of people claiming that acts of Congress and the United Nations can control the weather and make hurricanes less nasty and make torne tornadoes less frequent, which, by the way, none of them are showing any trends at all that are unusual. OK, Bill Nunn, the response. Well, we start talking about the facts. The, those uh, the the warming facts. period and the Roman, you know, Roman warming period, those are just in Europe, and they're, they're not representative. Both so let's, to, let's, see if we can, let's see if we can agree on a couple things. Do you agree that when I was a kid or when you were a kid, there was 340 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Sure, carbon dioxide's rising. You What's your point? OK. No. <clears throat> so here's the point, is it's rising extraordinarily fast. That's the difference between the bad old days and now. Is it's, Carbon it's dioxide much faster than ever in history. And so it's this is a so, trace. Uh, yeah, let him, let him finish. Well, no, so, uh, let him finish. That's, that's, it's the rate that's of great concern more than the actual uh, And what do you itself. put that rate down to? Though? Oh, it's human activity. I mean, you go back. This is what I say all the time. So you look in the uh, ice and you find bu tr bubbles of trapped gas from uh, 200 years ago, or let alone 1,000 years ago. There's nobody running around with a hypodermic needle injecting bubbles of gas in ancient uh, ice cores. I mean, you, that's the ancient atmosphere in there. And so you can determine the composition of the ancient atmosphere exactly. This uh, medieval warming period is brought up quite often, but it was really a European phenomenon. And it's, it's not, it wasn't global. And what are the biggest factors, the man-made factors, creating the oh. acceleration of CO2 in well, the atmosphere. The biggest thing is, uh, when I was nine years old, the Earth's population changed from 2.999 billion to 3 billion. Now it's, in my lifetime, it's now 7 billion people trying to live the way we lived in the developed, the way we live in the developed world. And it's just, we're just burning, carb burning carbon and spewing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere at an extraordinary rate. Right, so Mark Morano, if there is a massively increased acceleration in CO2, in the atmosphere at the same time that there's been a, a bigger than double the sizing of the population of the planet why would that not be inexorably linked explain to me 
Oh, well, CO2 is rising. No one's disputing that. What Bill Nye just did was waste everyone's time explaining that CO2 is rising. The question is, what impact does CO2 have on the weather? What impact does CO2 have on climate change? And that is where you look at the geologic record. We've had warmer periods where it's been with higher, with lower CO2, and we've had colder periods with higher CO2. And you have to go way back for some of that. But the bottom line is hundreds of factors are di dictating our climate. The medieval warm period was both southern and northern hemisphere. On my website, there's literally, it demolishes the idea of a hockey stick, new peer-reviewed studies. So the idea that Bill Nye is just going around saying CO2 is up, therefore global warming is dangerous, we should be concerned, it's not. You've also said that carbon dioxide can make the planet greener. Well, that's pretty well understood. There's hundreds of papers that have been published by plant physiologists that show that increasing CO2 is good for basically all the plants that they study, even crops like uh, corn. My long-term prediction is that eventually we're going to realize that more CO2 in the atmosphere is actually a good thing. And considering the fact that it is necessary for life on Earth to have CO2 in the atmosphere, it's amazing how little there is in the atmosphere. The perception among my friends here in New York is that you're this weird outlier. And all the other serious scientists say, man's doing it, we've got to fix it now. Well, I hate to say it, but that's, you know, a, a characterization that's come, a, come about because of the media. I mean, people like Al Gore portray people like me as fringe and when in fact... He, he I, won't debate anybody well, either. Well, no, of course not. I consider my views pretty mainstream and uh, I know there's a in lot of... In climatology, you find a lot of people who I agree find with a you. lot of people that agree with me but will not speak out because they're afraid that they might lose their funding. All you hear from on the other side from me are scientists who have decided to take a stand uh, publicly, uh, get involved with the politicians and... And if you say this is a big problem, that's when you get money to oh, fix sure. the problem. Yeah, Congress doesn't give money out for things that are not problems. But the debate is settled. Climate change is a fact. And when our children's children look us in the eye and ask if we did all we could to leave them a safer, more stable world with new sources of energy, I want us to be able to say, yes, we did. You've probably heard that before, that all credible scientists follow the narrative of man-made climate change. But as the founder of the Weather Channel points out, science isn't a consensus. When you see the government, when you see NASA, when you see other institutions say that 97% of climate scientists agree, do you think they're making it up? I, I, what I don't understand is how you well, square that. Well, that's a manipulated that. figure, and let me explain it to you. Uh, the the uh, government puts out about $2.5 billion directly for climate research every year. It only gives that money to scientists who will produce scientific results that support the global warming hypothesis. And in that full debate, the CNN anchor pitted Mr. Coleman against the CEO of the Weather Channel, who is a businessman, not a scientist. But let's address some of the concerns by those who warn of climate change. The question is, does carbon dioxide cause global warming? Former Vice President Al Gore says man-made carbon dioxide does cause global warming. But expert climatologists, including Shanshi Akasofu, Tim Ball, Ian Clark, Piers Corbin, Patrick J. Michaels, Nir Shaviv, and Frederick Singer, say there is no evidence carbon dioxide drives global temperature change. But I don't have much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Epidemics, uh, poverty, the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, the reality is that climate change ranks right up there with every single one of them. No nation is immune. We know what we have to do to avoid irreparable harm. And for the sake of future generations, our generation must move toward a global compact to confront a changing climate while we still can. And so upset were you by the claims of man-made global warning that you wrote a letter um, to the UCLA's Hammer Museum for their forum that was called Tackling Climate Change. And you said you don't have both sides represented. And I'm here to tell you that man-made global climate change is a myth. How can you say that? 
Well, it's very easy, but thank you for having me on your program. You know, a climate skeptic can rarely get on TV <laughs> ever since Al Gore made it a plank of the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And they say and you're uh, Looney Tunes if you don't believe, with, <laughs> believe as he you does. You bet. And I've been in the TV news organizations now for 60 years, and I only met two Republicans the whole time, and they were both hiding in the closet. <laughs> I mean, uh, this, is, this is a tough go for people who don't believe in climate change. It's very difficult for anybody to be against it because the media has told the nation over and over again, day after day, for 20 years, that the oceans are rising, the polar bears are dying, the sea, uh, the ice is melting, that storms are going to sweep the earth, and that we're all going to die of a heat wave. I mean, this is an incredible bad, bad science. Look further into the flat earth. How the sun, moon, and the stars operate. You have questions. You can get the answers. Turn to God's Word, the Bible. Start in Genesis again. Read it without bias. Read it as a child. Understand, there are thousands of people waking up to the flat earth truth. Understand that once you know the reality when you realize, when you wake up, you will know the lies. You will be able to expose the lies of this world and celebrate truth. God's truth. Understand that there's so many lies in the world. And to have discernment, turn to God. Pray for that discernment. Pray that he reveals the truth to you. Blessings. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.